Welcome to a beautiful blue sky, sunny, slightly windy Iowa day. Day number 14 of harvest. Day number four of corn harvest. Yesterday we got done harvesting the intercrop plot and then we moved across the field just underneath that wind turbine and uh, that's when we broke the combine. Here's a little recap of what happened. Apparently that was too much. This is the face plate that goes on the front of the feeder house of the combine. There are a couple bolts on the bottom, a couple bolts on the top that we have to loosen in order to swivel it. And the way the face plate works is it attaches to the corn head. Then when we loosen those bolts, we can either tip the head back or we can tip the head down. Our head was pointed really far down, so what we were trying to do is tip it back just a little bit. And we did that by putting a block of wood underneath the head with the bolts loose, so when we set the head down, it was supposed to tip the face plate back, but it ended up breaking it because we had all the weight on one row unit. I guess we're bringing this down to the main heated shop to fix it. So this whole thing is no good anymore. This side, yeah, that side got reamed out. But that side, it just completely <laughs> broke it. So we ended up getting everything tore apart around midnight, and now we're just waiting for one part from the Dos Amigos from American Farm Equipment, and then we will be ready to go. And I have a little favor to ask. If you get enjoyment out of my videos, if you could hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. The Argentina guys stayed till about midnight last night, then they must have got there pretty early this morning, because it sounds like they already have the combine fixed. So here's the plan today. That grain bin right there, we just got the floor covered so we were able to turn the fans on and we're blowing air through the hot dried corn we're wanting to get more of that floor covered that way we get more even air distribution through the floor problem is our dryer can only do like 300 bushels per hour when we're in stuff that's like 25 percent so the 40 acres where we broke the combine last night is testing about 18. we're going to finish that 40 acres this morning we'll be able to get about 8,000 more bushels in this bin get a thicker mat on the floor. They're talking rain in three days coming up and then consecutive rain after that. So once we get that 40 acres done, we're gonna hop down to Uncle Orland's farm. This past July, that farm got smacked by wind. So our sand quality there is a little iffy. We're kind of concerned if we get some rain on it and some wind that that might go down. So that corn's like 25%. We're gonna get the 40 acres, get the floor built up in this one so air blows through evenly, and we're gonna go down to Uncle Orleans. If everything goes well, we're gonna pick there, so that way we can be feeding the dryer during wet days when it stops raining. That's the plan anyway. Where's Ricardo? I haven't seen him. Look at the bathroom. He might have went in the tractor. Oh, well, there's Ricardo. He's hiding in the John Deere. Our harvest capacity is really limited this year due to the fact that we cannot fill our wet bin full because the foundation underneath of it is failing. So we're just filling the bin like 25% full and then just making sure we're not going anything over that because we don't want that bin to fall over. There's stuff that's going to be fixed over there at some point. It's just, it's all tied up in a lawsuit right now. Did you check the oil on this? No, I didn't. Show okay. me how and I'll do it next time. So there's kind of two things on this one. Um, the water's here, it should okay. be good. But just always stay back on this when you yeah. do it, and you know, if it's got some pressure. When it's, when it's hot. Yes. Or even on cold. So basically as long as you can see down in there and just see some water. Yeah. Now, it's not water, it's antifreeze, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, that's dry. That's not good. Where do I get that? Ah, uh, I think there's some in this shed. Uh, there might be one here. Yep, there's some in that brown box. This, this um, maybe not. I'm filming you in case you fall. <laughs> With my luck, I will. It's covering the bottom now. All right. So we're refilling the semis on the windmill road and then we just cross behind us. We can take this path down right over there and then we're going right on the other side of Luke and Ashley's house here. Our waterway is going to be a break of our cutoff today. So this is the dryer stuff on the left side and then this was planted later. So this is a little bit wetter. It did not get smacked by the wind like Uncle Orland's. Otherwise we would just stay here and continue on this. But we're just concerned about the quality of the stocks on Uncle Orland's and if we get some wind and rain we just we do not want those going down on the ground. I guess we're gonna try to double trouble it with the Freightliners today. Sounds like the red Volvo has a brake chamber that is gushing a bunch of air. So we need to get that fixed before we can run that one again. But good news is we're half mile from home so we should be able to keep up with two trucks. Sweet, we're just in time for Cooper here with the combine. Go down and get that first or help him get a head on. 
Zach's with him, they'll be fine. Oh, there's the head, they're coming. I think the 340's the last item to go. And we already got the engine warmed up. We're about to have our fruit first test experience with the bumpiness of this car with the wheels. Got a nice dip we're going through right here at 11 miles an hour. Let's see how it handles it. Oh, that was actually pretty smooth. Ooh, we got another one coming up. I'm gonna slow down a little bit more for this one because that one looks kind of steep. The tires are not as smooth as tracks when it comes to grain car running across the field. They're just not. I don't think anything is ever going to beat a track. It is the absolute Cadillac of the Cadillac. It feels like you're riding on rails. It's smooth. But these 1250s on this grain cart are three times smoother than the little skinny ones we have on our 674 cart. So definitely an improvement with the fatter tires over the skinny, but not as smooth as tracks. But for what 99.999% of farmers will ever need, these do more than good enough job. Whoa, wash out. See how that handles that. Oh, no, see yes. Did you fix it? Yeah. Or Sebastian well, fixed it? Well, yeah, probably more <laughs> Sebastian than me. If you want to learn more about these Franco heads, Lucas's phone number is 319-823-0027. These heads start out at $10,000 per row. Doesn't matter the size, and they weigh 500 pounds per row. So they are the lowest priced on the market, and they are the lightest heads on the market. And by the way, they have a three-year full warranty on every single part on it. And that also includes labor for the warranty repairs. Give Lucas a call. Ah, Cooper cleaned the windows on the combine. Corn, 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 corn. And then we go off to the side about six feet. And it's pretty clean. I got one there. Got one there. That's acceptable. This particular 40 acres we're on was planted in the phase one of our planting. Right after we got done planting, we got about two and a half inches of rain and it caused some crusting on this. And it definitely affected our stand. We should have a plant about every six inches. So that's right, that's right, that's right. But here, we're missing a plant, and we have one. We're missing a plant, we have one. We're missing one right there. There's a lot of gaps in this, and I think that's probably gonna affect some yield here. But, what do you do? They're still making adjustments on the corn head, just trying to get deck plates all in, make sure everything is consistent. We're gonna try it. Oh, mate, sweet. Mate, you want some mate? Mmm, no, yum. Mate is the tea of Argentina. That is like the Americans' black coffee. They have to have it everywhere they go. Right. Look, look at this. They even have a special leather, Italian leather cup for it with a spoon <laughs> built into it. Or a straw. You pour hot water on it and you drink from the straw. Ooh, I think we might have had a breakthrough here. This is looking better, not perfect yet, but a lot better than what it's been. The way a corn head works, we have the corn go up into here, and when it gets wedged in here, it gets sucked straight down by these rollers that are underneath. When we have the head going slow, those rollers don't really spin that fast, and it pulls kind of slowly. With the combine going forward, you basically end up breaking off the whole top three quarters of the plant. That goes up the auger and that goes into the machine. Up inside the rotor when we have a whole stock and we have thousands of them in there, plus the corn, the corn gets caught up in the stocks and basically doesn't get separated out and dropped down onto the separating table. It stays up in the rotor and it gets kicked out of the back of the machine. I think that's what, what has been happening. So what we did, we sped the head up like 120 revolutions faster than we had it. So when the corn head got to it, it basically pulls everything down through except the ear. Now we're dealing with just a lot more ears inside the rotor instead of the ears and the stocks. That seems like it's doing a lot better job now. Mm, mm, mm. Now I think we rolled the head a little too far back because the devastators are all the way maxed out down on the ground and then our head sight row sensor feelers that touch the ground and control the height control they're not even touching the ground now. So we are too far back. We need to tip it forward a little bit. Like I was telling Zach, this is one of those things. It's all new to us on how to actually set these things correctly because with our 2388 combine, we combine three, three and a half miles an hour. So you could get away with a lot just because you weren't going very fast. Where this one, when we're trying to do four and a half, five, five and a half, sometimes even six miles an hour, it's just asking a lot more from the machine. So things need to be set correctly in order to achieve that. All right, good thing we got a backup camera. Oh, that's not good. Hopefully we make it over there. 
Hopefully. I'm just amazed how well this thing pulls this thing. Thank goodness for the backup camera. All right, let's get this thing out of the way. Whoa, that's a hole right there. Wow. Watch me stick my hand down in there and a coyote just comes running out. How is this ground above it still intact? That's incredible. Now knowing what we kind of know now, all the messing around we were trying to do yesterday when we ended up breaking the head and fixing the head, all was kind of pointless because we basically just undid everything that we were <laughs> doing yesterday. But it's... Part of the learning process, everybody wants to act like they have it together all the time and they just automatically know how to do everything. And sometimes learning how to do stuff for yourself so that way you actually develop an understanding through your personal experiences and your actions of why things are the way they are is extremely valuable. So yes, this may have been expensive in regards to we spent a whole day working on it and all the parts and you know, everybody's time involved with the project, but we learned, and now we're gonna be able to take this information forward for literally the rest of our lives. And it's going to serve us anytime we're on any piece of equipment in any field, or sorry, not any piece of equipment, any corn head. But to me, like that's what life's about, these experiences, and it's going to make us that much better in the long run. Well, it's not perfect yet, but this looks so much better. I got a kernel of corn there. Let's see what we got. We got one there. Got one there. This area here looks pretty clean. Got one there, got one there, there. So seeing three in an area this big, that's acceptable. It seems rather obvious now looking it and being like oh yeah if you speed the head up and you make sure you're not pulling a bunch of stock in and you're just getting the ears you'll probably do a better job of separating we got it locked in the dome now just in time we got all the end rows off so now everything is back and forth nice straight rows it won't take us long to get this knocked out now oh that doesn't look good sounds like a chain broke on the combine or half link of the chain so the chain came apart so now they got to go in town and Go get a half link. And this Frankel for Bill Cornhead does have a three year, 100% warranty on all the parts and the labor's covered as well. But sometimes when you have a $4 part break, it's easier just to go get it and get going again, which is what we did here. Down shift in the first gear, throttle, slide gates. Make sure the door is shut on the bottom of the trailer. corn will allow dad to run the dryer for probably about another hour before we're gonna be out again maybe not quite that long over here we got what's called a rubber cob so when we got our corn cob and we go to break it these ones just bend <laughs> they should snap right away. They shouldn't get that <laughs> bend into them. Man, there's still more corn on the ground here than I would like to see. I don't know what else to do. We got everything opened up pretty much as far as we can go. It, before we're being really dirty in the green tank. We're probably losing half a bushel an acre right there, which I don't know what's acceptable or not. I'd like to see nothing, but I don't know if you can do that. All right, loads are gonna start coming in fast now. As soon as we got here, he's full. Now kind of the challenging thing is, this cart is a 674 bushel cart, or so they say, we figure 600 bushels. And that means that we are not going to be able to fully fill the semi, and it's just over half, so the other cart's gonna have 1300 bushels on it, so you can't hardly sit and wait. Otherwise, that grain cart's just half full. If we were further from home, I might wait, but we're going right there, so. 
it's pretty fast. When you have two semis out in the field, it works pretty good because then this cart will put 600 bushels in, the other one comes with 1,300, it'll finish filling this semi, and it'll fill the rest of the, the next semi, so then you have two semis full, then you can just keep things moving really well. But in this case, where Dad's tending to the dryer, and I'm the only guy in the semi, it makes it a little weird. The name of the game is just to make sure that the combine stays moving. That's all we really care about right here. Just keep it moving back and forth. If we have weird loads, the combine doesn't need to know about it. We just dumped another one. And I'm betting when we get back to the field, Zach will be full. Before I forget, this this radio died. We made it here before Zach. We're starting to get into some corn that's a little bit drier now, like 17%. So dad's trying to get the dryer figured out. He's shooting it through fast. It's coming out about 14% right now, which is a little over dry or drier than we need to make it. And so he's just trying to get that fine tuned down and I'm just driving. Just like clockwork. Just like clockwork. Okay, we're pumping them out now. I literally just pulled in and Zach's here. As I was pulling out in the field, Ricardo was already pulling up, he's full. So we're going to let dad dump that semi and I can pick them up in this one. They're keeping me moving now. Hey, brakes are released. We're good. Biggity, biggity, biggity. Hey, here's waiting for me. Uh-oh, it appears we have a stopped combine over there. We'll go see what it's about. <laughs> Thought I just heard it fire up. Light switch. It smells like football pads in here. Looks like they're running just fine. 69,000 pounds. I really like that scale on the side. Under Firth, you are smart for putting that there. The strap guy, we're not gonna put all that on there. I'm gonna be severely overweight if we do that. We'll probably put 60,000. Ricardo, stop, you are plenty close. You're like four feet too close. If the grain carts get too close to the edge of the semi, they'll rub the auger down the side of the trailer and then it puts a dent in the auger and then that dent eventually wears a hole there and then you spill grain everywhere and then you have to get a new auger. And a new auger is like, last time we had to get one was I think $7,500. So I, I just would like the carts to be away from the trailer. <laughs> Cooper just pulled up to the fuel trailer right there with the combine. We got done at Luke and Ashley's on that 40. So now we're heading a half mile down the road that direction to Uncle Orland's farm. Stopping. With the little bit that we can put in the regular hopper bottom bin, we have like 18% corn in there right now. That's what's shooting through the dryer as we speak. The stuff we're in at Uncle Orland's is at 20 or so. We're putting in the overhead bin as our wet storage tank. We can fit just about five loads in there. The semi we have on right now is going to fill that bin. Then we'll just have the semis and the grain carts to fill for tonight. And then we'll be full. With the hopper bottom, Dad said it's like right there. And it's combed down, so it won't be long and that'll be empty. Oh, looks like we have the gray freight liner full. Ricardo's putting some on the front of the red freight liner. Then Zach is going to get full, so we're gonna have both semis full. Well, for all the breakdowns we had today, we got 50 acres done. Not a phenomenal day, but we've had way, way, way worse, so we're gonna take it. We're on Dunk Orleans now. We are approximately 9% done with corn harvest, I believe. If we have a good day tomorrow, we'll be 19% done. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.